Now we've got an opportunity to overhaul this aquarium. I've been involved on and off on about on this aquarium for a long, long, long time. And as far as aquariums are concerned, it's really great just to give a little overhaul every now and then. And you find giving it an overhaul will completely revive your interest in the aquarium and you can make it look absolutely so much better. So one of the first things I'd recommend with this particular tank is there's a lot of just plain colored fish in here. So what I'd really love to do is pull all these rocks out. Then I'd like to remove all of the plainer colored fish and then systematically we can slowly replace them with some really colorful fish. Now, um, there's always a little bit of risk involved with this because the existing fish um, are all used to each other and they will have to take to new fish. That's rarely ever a problem in a well-populated aquarium like this one, but you do have to be careful when you're adding new fish. You can't put any fish in small enough to fit in the mouth of the larger fish, and then you don't really want to put in any larger fish which are going to compete with the dominance of the existing fish, or they may not get along too well. So that's just something you need to keep an eye on. And you find that aggression is very much suppressed by numbers. So when you have a lot of fish in the tank, the fish aggression just isn't such a big problem. When there's not so many fish in the tank, that's when fish aggression becomes an issue. So you just need to be aware that if we're going to go and pull over half the fish out, and then we're going to aim to slowly repopulate the aquarium again, we just got to be aware that um, the fish might hide a lot more. Because in the wild, when there's a lot of fish around, to them, that means safety. But if suddenly a lot of the fish are gone, then that can spook the fish and make them wonder, where did everybody go? So therefore, they tend to be, um, they tend to not feel as safe. And when they're not feeling as safe, then they can actually be more aggressive. Now, you're seeing a lot of aggressive behavior in this aquarium. And it really isn't a big problem because of the number of fish in there. The other thing I'd want to comment on this tank is the fish have, are definitely overfed. So when you look at the belly of the fish, we're really not wanting to see such big bellies. We're um, definitely wanting to see um, from the underneath the gill plate to the anus. We like to see a little bit of a belly, but we don't want to see the big bellies that we're seeing here. Now, fish keeping is basically 50% water quality, and I'm going to check that in a minute, and it's 50% fish food quality. So um, I am definitely concerned about the food quality that are being fed at the moment, only because I've never used that brand, and the, in the ingredient list looks very average. So I would really rather a better quality food be fed, um, which I'll go into in a minute. Now, the other thing is these fish don't, well, fish don't live forever. So a lot of these fish are potentially actually quite old. And in the wild, a lot of these species typically live about four to seven years. Uh, you can definitely get longer out of an aquarium. You can get sort of 10 years and so forth. But four to seven is, is more expected. And what we want to be looking out for is this sort of behavior. Like this fella, you see the electric yellow sitting up in the corner here. He's gasping and he is very much excluded from the rest. And that could just be that he's getting old and that he's sort of had his day. Or it could mean that he's, um, he's suffering from various issues such as the buildup of pheromones and phenols. And they're very hard things to monitor. But um, increased water changes and the addition of medias like polyfilter are definitely going to help to remove various accumulants that can accumulate in the water. And the use of activated carbon will be very good in this situation because the water's got a little bit of what's called a gilvan tint in the water. So the water's not really clear. And that's just um, um, due to a lot of biological activity. And that will um, quite easily be rectified with activated carbon in the filter. Um, we could also look at considering even putting in more filter material. Um, the other comment is the amount of um, irregularity in the gravel. Now, due to a lot of these fish being nesting fish, that's a war that you will not win because these fish will naturally create nests and these nests they use for attracting females. 
So they've got all day to do that, and you definitely don't have all day to try to um, to smooth out the gravel. So, so this sort of situation here, I wouldn't worry too much because that's definitely a battle that you will not win. Now, one thing to be very conscious of is being realistic with your expectations. So it is my experience, and it is absolutely the history of this particular aquarium, that it would get all done up, the decorations changed, some new fake plants, some new fish, and then you'd find that you'd watch your tank all the time and the tank would really become a part of your life. But over time, after about a year, uh, you, you, so I, I, what I believe is you love it for a year, then you like it for a year, then you tend to have seen it. And if you can walk past the tank without having to look at it, then what I'd recommend doing is doing an overhaul, change all your decorations, potentially change some fish, make it look considerably different, and then all of a sudden you'll absolutely love it again. So it is not realistic to think that you're going to set a particular tank up and you're going to love it with equal passion the whole time. You're definitely going to go through phases. So just um, understanding how that works is, I think, a really important thing. And um, I think this tank here is um, due for a little bit of a, a bit of love. And this tank can be an absolutely spectacular feature in the home. I really request is that any time you come down to visit us at the shop, there's two things I really want you to do. One is grab your phone. We want a video so we can see everything going on with the fish, what the fish are. We want to see the water flow. We want to see the filter. And most of all, we also want to see any bits and pieces you've got for the aquarium. We want to see your fish foods, your water ages, your supplements, anything else that you might have to happen to have for the fish. So we're definitely going to want to review that. And then we want a sample of water. If you can just bring us like a Vegemite jar of water, then we can check on the water, we can look at the fish, and then from that situation, we can fairly accurately um, suggest various fish to go in the tank. But one thing that you need to be aware of when we're suggesting fish is a lot of it comes down to will your dog get along with my dog? What I mean by that is that um, the fish have their own personalities and we can recommend fish that go with your fish and most of the time we are right, but sometimes um, they don't get along. So you need to be aware um, what happens when they're not getting along. And once again, if you believe the fish are not getting along, we just want exactly the same thing again. We just want you to video the behavior, bring us a sample of water, and then we'll advise you. And at the end of the day, you can't put fish in that fit in the biggest fish's mouth, otherwise they may very well eat them and then putting in similar looking species that are large is the highest risk because one fish that looks similar to another fish is when they're gonna be conspecific and that's when they're really gonna compete with each other. And the more fish you have, the less issues you tend to have with them getting along. The less fish you have, the more they tend to hide, the more territorial they tend to be and the less they tend to get along. And the other thing to be really aware of is who is the boss of the tank. Now, this aquarium here, it's not directly um, obvious to me which one's the boss. I'm assuming it's one of these two zebras. But how well the fish will get along, particularly when you don't have so many fish, will be governed by who the boss fish is. Because what the boss fish should do is keep the rest in line. And if the boss fish sees other fish fighting it's quite normal to see the boss fish jump in and break up the fight because he actually likes the hierarchy the way it is now a good boss will patrol the aquarium and make sure that nobody fights or the fight a little bit of a scuffle is totally fine but we don't want to see too much of this behavior here where he's um breathing heavily and out of the pack um and then in saying that a bad boss will tend to pick on one and will tend to slowly wear it down and then eventually kill it and then may pick on the next one and slowly wear it down so if you see that adolf hitler sort of behavior then you have a few main options the best option is just get rid of adolf because if you get adolf and chuck him in a tank where he's not the boss generally he won't cause you any trouble and then you could also just get more fish sometimes that works or you could get a bigger fish in to throw adolf's power so um, just a little basic understanding of how the fish are getting along is also really important.